Hola, soy yo, Vicky, otra vez. Eh, espero que todo bien, como siempre. Eh, ok, today vamos a volver al libro. Yeah, we're going back to the book today, the Break the Language Barrier uh, Level 3. And we are on page 46, página 46. Estamos mirando los imperativos. Yeah, we're looking at the imperatives at the moment. Uh, si no tienes el libro, puedes comprarlo aquí, uh, en el centro, en San Miguel de Salinas. O también uh, puedes comprarlo en cualquier sitio de Amazon. Break the language barrier, Vicky Riley, hay cuatro nivel, uh, niveles, there are four levels. Um, so, eso es nivel tres. So, if you are new to this channel and you're a beginner, or if you haven't done past tenses, you need to go back level one or level two. At level three, we've just done the future tenses and we're now looking at imperatives or commands. Okay, so in a previous video, we looked at regular uh, imperatives and we saw they're really quite easy to make. Uh, certainly the positives, in other words, when you're telling someone to do something. The negatives, telling someone not to do something, a little bit more complicated maybe. Um, but anyway, today what we're going to look at are the irregular imperatives. Now, as with all irregular verbs, uh, there's no way of knowing if something is irregular, uh, doesn't follow the normal pattern, um, and it could be a verb that's regular in the present tense, or regular in the future tense, or regular in the, the past tenses, that may suddenly be irregular in the imperative. There's no way of knowing. That's not really, you know, there are some typical verbs like ir, to go is nearly always irregular, but not always. So, you know, we just have to learn them. It, unfortunately, it's just one of those things uh, that we just have to grin and bear when it comes to learning another language. Irregular verbs, we just have to learn them. So, let's have a look on uh, page 46. We've got, the we've got a box up at the top with the infinitive, the positive and the negative. So, decir uh, is to say or to tell. And the positive is di and the negative is no digas. Hacer is to do or to make. Positive, haz. The negative, no hagas. Ir is to go, of course. Ver is a positive, yeah, go. And don't go, no vaya, vayas. Oh, and by the way, I should mention we're looking at tu at the moment, just the singular you. Uh, so this is when you're telling just one person what to do. When you're telling lots of people what to do, that's vosotros, and that'll be in the next section that we'll be looking at. Okay, so yeah, then we've got poner, which is to put. So uh, pon, put it, or just put. And don't put, no pongas. Salir is to leave or go out, to exit. And sal is leave or go out. And no salgas, don't leave or don't go out. Ser is to be, of course. And uh, be, as in like you said someone, or be nice or be kind, is se, S-E. And don't be is no seas. Okay? That's, of course, using ser. Yeah? Estar is uh, regular. So, just that with this tense, just like uh, any other tense, we always, when we're using the verb to be, we have to think about whether we're needing to use ser or estar. But that is explained in quite a few other videos if you want to go over your ser and estars. Tener is to have, so have it, have, ten, and don't have, no tengas. Uh, venir is to come, so ven is come. Ven, ven aquí, you probably hear people saying that, you probably hear it sounds more like a V, but it's actually a V, it should be a V. Ven, yeah, ven aquí, come here. 
and don't come, no vengas, no vengas. Okay, so that's the actual irregular forms. That's all there are. So that that's, that's quite good, really. There's not that many uh, to remember, and they're quite distinctive. I do think a lot of the time uh, irregular verbs can be easier to remember because they're always that bit more distinctive and easy to remember. No, not easy. Easier <laughs> would be the word. Uh, nothing in Spanish is easy. I do accept that. Okay, so we're going to practice A, uh, and as I say, you don't need the book because I'm going to read out the sentence in English first and then tell you where it is in Spanish, and I will put them in the description box uh, below. So, number one, put the money here. So, put, pon el dinero aquí, put the money here. Number two, tell me everything, dime Todo. Dime is something that you probably hear quite often, uh, you know, when you go in any place, a shop, a restaurant, bar, and they'll go, dime. And uh, it, that translates to, I mean, it means tell me. But uh, dime is like, uh, yeah, what do you want? What would you like? Or can I help? You know, it's 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 got its literal translation, which is tell me. And then what it translates to like what we might say if you walked into a shop in the in a, an english speaking country uh, they might say can i help you well in spain it's more common not it's much more common to say just say dime because they're much more forthright and uh, you know puedo ayudarte i'm not saying they would never say that but it sounds a bit convoluted in spain in spain it's much more direct so dime uh, tell me everything dime todo Number three, I wish uh, somebody was here now that I could say this to. Uh, make me a cup of tea, and that would be hazme una taza de té. So we're going to look at what pronouns me, make me. So we're going to look at those next in, in this uh, video. So I won't say too much to that about that at the moment. Number four, leave the house now. Sal de la casa ahora. Number five, come to the party early. Ven a la fiesta temprano. Number six, be good. Uh, se bueno. And number seven, go to the shops. Ve a las tiendas. Number eight, have the red one. Ten el rojo. Number nine, don't put the keys there. No pongas las llaves allí. Uh, no pongas las llaves. Uh, number ten, don't say anything. No digas nada. Uh, number eleven, don't make the dinner now. No hagas la cena ahora. Don't leave this room. Number 12, numero 12, no salgas de esta habitación, cuarto de este cuarto. Number 13, don't come again, no vengas más, or no vengas de nuevo, or otra vez también. Numero 14, don't be silly, no seas tonto. And number 15, don't go to school today. No vayas a la escuela hoy. And number 16, don't have any more animals. <laughs> bueno, eso no, eh, nunca voy a ver. Siempre voy a tener animales. So, don't have any more an animals. No tengas más animales. Okay. Okay, hope you understood that okay. As usual, if you've got any queries, doubts, you can send me an email. You can write it in the commentary box underneath the video. I'll always answer any queries that you've got. And as usual, if there's anything you particularly want me to cover, I will in a video. 
Okay, so I just want to go on to the next page now in the book, which is Pagina 47, and the placement of pronouns with the imperative. Okay, so we did have one came up in the previous uh, exercise, and you may have noticed it went at the end, and that's where they go, yeah, if it's a positive uh, command. So if you're telling somebody to do something, yeah, like the examples we've got here in the book, Dimelo, tell me it, Athlo, do it, Compraselo, buy yourself it, or buy him it, sorry, that would be, buy him or her it. Levantate, get up. Dásilo, uh, give it him or her. Uh, Pregúntaselo, ask him or her. So, the pronouns go on the end if it's a positive command when you're telling somebody to do something. And they go tight if there's more than one pronoun, like a, an indirect and a direct object pronoun. If you don't know about pronouns, you need to find the video that explains about pronouns. Now, for a negative, it goes in between the no and the verb. So we've got some examples here. No me lo digas. Don't tell me that or it. No se lo compres. Don't buy it for him. No lo hagas. Don't do it. Okay, so in practice A, you had some sentences uh, they had to put into Spanish using pronouns. So, number one, buy me it. Compramilo. Oh, actually, it's la because it's feminine in brackets. Compramila. Number two, give it him. Dáselo. Number three, find me it now. Encuéntramelo ahora. Number four, tell him, dile. Now, the reason it's le and not lo is because tell him has an implied direct object, which is whatever it is you're going to tell him. And the him is actually indirect object, which is le. So, dile. Number five, send it them. Uh, so, it depends which verb you use for send, if we use mandar. So, mandeselo, mandeselo, or you could use enviar, enviarselo. Write us it, or write it to us, I suppose we'd say. So, escribe nos la, because it's feminine according to the, you know, it's asking you to use the feminine. Numero siete, sell, sell them it. So, vende se, is it feminine? No. Oh, is that an, no. Vende se lo. Do me it or do it for me. So, hazme lo. So, remember, if there's a direct object and an indirect object, the indirect object, which is always a person, comes first. Yeah? So, hazme lo. Do me it. Yeah. Numero nueve, open it for us. Abre nos lo. Number ten, make her it. So, hazse lo. Uh, it's feminine, so as, se, la. Okay, from 11 then, they're all negative. Don't touch it. No lo toques. Uh, don't do it for him. No se lo hagas. Number 13, don't pay them it. No se lo pagas, uh, pagues. Number 14, don't read her it. No se la leas. Uh, sorry, no se la leas. Yeah. Number fifth, numero quince, don't close it on me. No me lo cierres. 
Number 16, number ODS, he says, don't make it then. So, no se lo, it's a feminine, no se la hagas. Diecisiete, don't leave it us. No nos lo dejes. Number 18, don't bring it to me. No me lo traigas. Number 19, don't cook them it. No se la cocines, because it's a feminine it. And don't forget me, no me olvides. Okay? Oof. So, these sort of little uh, sentences like that, you know, uh, Dásilo. Once you can understand pronouns and imperatives and, you know, so you get a strange sort of, that's all one word, dásilo. Now, if you saw that, you might think, oh, my God, what does that mean? But, yeah, once you understand pronouns, then you understand things a lot better and it's much easier to work out what sentences are saying. Okay, so uh, I hope you understood that all okay. As I say, any questions, let me know. If you found it useful, please give me the thumbs up. And uh, if you've not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel to get notification of future videos. Uh, gracias por mirar. Um, yeah, don't forget the books on Amazon. And also, if you know anybody else who's learning Spanish, maybe share this uh, video with them if you think it'll they'll find it helpful or any of the videos. So, muchas gracias y te veo en el próximo video. Gracias.